Hey there, it's Anonymous T. Hope you guys are all having an amazing day today, sending good vibes, sending positivity, sending blessings, and good energy to each and every single one of you. Thank you so much for tuning in. So today we have another update on Love Island USA because there is more drama, there is more scandal that we got to talk about. So now we are in the phase of press for the show. The Islanders are out of the villa. However, the black in People of color islanders are, are still in Fiji doing interviews from their hotel room, you guys. Meanwhile, some other people, such as Kaylor, such as Leah and others, they get, you know, flewed out. They get to fly out to LA, to New York for in-person interviews, you guys. So so can can the math math for me? Because I thought Serena and Cordell were the winners of the show. But it seems as though the black and people of color islanders are being sidelined. Some of these interviews, they are grouping them together in the same interview versus doing the normal thing people do, which is cut out separate interviews. And then also the questions that are specifically being asked to the black and people of color islanders are about... Aaron, Kaler, and Rob are not many questions about them as a couple, their experience in the villa. One publication went as far equals. They asked one Kaler and Aaron question at the tail end of the interview, right? And they put that in the title as if that was what the couples were discussing the entire 15 minutes or so, or however long they get to do these interviews. And my question is, what is going on? And that's not even the tip of the iceberg. So you know everybody's going viral. The Islanders are finding out via these interviews that they're viral. And all of these fans, they put together these edits, right? There's edits of Cordell and Serena. There's edits of Leah, Serena, and Janae. There's edits of, you know, Kenny and Janae. Now, most of them have gone viral already on TikTok, right? But a lot of people had saved and bookmarked special edits that were specifically for Twitter. And guess what happened today, you guys? A whole bunch of Twitter accounts got suspended so so if you were for a shirt cer certain ship on love island usa and you had been making edits and all of the things mysteriously at some point today your account became suspended and then when you went to investigate you found out peacock struck your account and said you are committing copyright infringement and you'll have to follow these steps to try to get your account back no, 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 no. So it was fine, all of these edits when the show was airing, when you guys were hitting record-breaking views and more views than Bridgerton, right? All of that was fine. But now all of a sudden, the show is over and now you want to close up shop? as we're gearing up for all of these post-show interviews. And oh, by the way, there's still a reunion on August 19th. Now, if you want to shut something down, Peacock, can you shut down all of the P-O-R-N that is in the Love Island USA hashtag right now? That literally is copy and paste. You think it is a tweet about Love Island, and some of them are so good that they actually are things people have said about Love Island. Except for when you get down to the image, and the image is P-O-R-N, you guys. And, and there's no activity. There's no filtering anything out. There's nothing. And speaking of P-O-R-N, more pics and videos today, allegedly. Drop of candle. Here's the thing. 
you know, I, it's not about like or dislike for me. It's about your actions that we're going to call out whether I agree or I disagree with. And, and for Kendall, for, for all intents and purposes, I felt, you know, to an extent he was a game player. I felt there were some comments that he made during Casa and his behavior at Casa, trying to egg on the guys to make it seem as though he had the show in the bag. There were just things that he did that were annoying. But with that being said, you guys, do you really have to go these lengths to try to quote unquote expose somebody and you waited to release the first set of evidence, the first set of videos and all the things you released that the day of the finale, which is on Sunday. And now we are on Tuesday and you were still dropping more material. And Kendall has already came out and gave a statement like, listen, this was somebody I trusted. And um, it's unfortunate that this has happened. And, and that's all I'm going to speak on it. Except where they decided to drop more content of you in compromising positions and, and some, you know, sort of inappropriate acts. And then furthermore... There is an APB out on the relationship of Cordell and Nicole. Does anybody know why Nicole has not acknowledged her relationship on Instagram at all, period, as it pertains to her and Kendall? No, uh, you know, repost in the Instagram stories, no official post since being out of the villa. I thought that you were falling in love with him and that you had so much love with him per your declaration speech, Nicole, even though you already curved him earlier in the day when he told you uh, that he was in love with you, that he loved you and, and you just looked at him like, that's great. Like those are big words and, and just gave the mute challenge as a response. Completely and utterly ridiculous levels of behavior, you guys. Completely and utterly ridiculous. But nonetheless, you know, we're going to keep a watch on that. Because if they haven't broken up already, they definitely will be broken up either by the reunion or shortly after it. The question is going to be, is Nicole going to utilize the scandal as the excuse for the breakup? It is her way out. Oh, this is too much for me, or this is too inappropriate, or, or whatever. Or is she going to stick it out? Because keep in mind, these interviews, you guys, that you're seeing now have been done over the past couple of days, right? Because some of these outlets have early access to the finale. Some of these outlets have early access to who won the show. So they already have done the press. And then that's why you see those interviews come out so fast with these Islanders, right? Because they'll have like a full day of interviews, right? And you're seeing back to back to back all of these interviews coming out uh, both yesterday and today. And nonetheless, we have not seen Nicole and Kendall at all. I believe, as, I, as far as I know, they're still in Fiji. The only people I saw leave Fiji was Kayla, Aaron, and Leah. But even Daniela, I believe, is still in Fiji because her and Janae did a messy TikTok in regards to Rob, which we need to talk about in a little bit here because that is crazy, right? But Kendall and Nicole, I don't know. It's giving thin ice. It's giving there, there's not much more to give or, or to, you know, fake out and, and all of these things. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on that. They So there were um, some footage of the Islanders filming something, filming some type of group date of sorts. However, for most of the footage that was posted, Kendall and Nicole initially were not there. And, and then like magic, it was like they they appeared, right? Because everybody was comfortable. There, there was like chairs in between the couples. And then out of nowhere, it, it was like a bat signal went off. Like, like what happened to Kendall and Nicole? And they came in and they were like antsy, right? But nonetheless, you guys, no updates, nothing. No proof of life, you guys, outside of these interviews that were pre-taped, right? 
So, so that's the other thing. Uh, the interviews so far, like I said, the ones that are melanemic, that are focused in on Kaylor and Aaron and Rob, I'm just over it. I don't care about it. The, we saw enough with the show trying to make Kaylor and Aaron happen, and it still wasn't enough to get them to the finale. We saw enough of the show trying to make Aaron and Rob happen, and it wasn't enough to get either one of them to the finale. And now people are trying to clout chase off of the Rob and Leah edits, you guys. So now Miguel has to answer questions because he's doing solo dolo interviews, right? So now he has to answer questions in his interviews about all of the Leah and Rob edits that are on Twitter, that are on TikTok and all of the things of fans still shipping toxicity, right? Shipping nonsense, right? Shipping tomfoolery, right? He has to now answer questions about that, right? And now, like I said in these melanemic interviews, now the latest scandal was a couple of days ago, of course. Aaron is on his Instagram stories. Kaylor is in the background. It sounds like Kaylor's friend is saying, I don't understand what the big deal about Leah is. She is going to be irrelevant in six months. And we really don't hear a rebuttal or anything from Kaylor that's like, hey, I don't agree with that. Hey, that's my girl. I'm the one that lived with her, blah, 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 blah. It kind of sounded like that was something Kaylor wanted to say, but no, she couldn't say, but also probably didn't realize that Aaron was doing a uh, live commentary and having her in the background and setting her up to be dragged, just like he did on the show, setting her up to be Boo Boo the Fool, right? In every single aspect, every single time. And I just don't understand, where, where is the family from Pennsylvania? They should be on the first flight out to LA to say, listen, we, we need you separate from Aaron. You need to see these Casa episodes before you talk about this is going to be a forever thing, especially when Aaron is on his third reality show, his second dating reality show, and lives in the UK, and you live in the Midwest. No, 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 right? And, and so, I like I said, she gets an in-person interview with Nick um, Filao, however you say his last name, from, from The Bachelor, Bachelorette. But people are pissed because he did an interview with, you know, Serena and Cordell, who last I checked were the winners, from the Fiji Hotel, you guys, on a Zoom call, on Microsoft Teams, you guys. That they apparently were not good enough to fly out to L.A., to get the red carpet rolled out for them, and they are first place, you guys. And apparently second place is allegedly rumored to be on The Tonight Show, you guys. Not the winners. The runner-up, right? And they're doing all of this solely by Instagram followers, right? Who has the most Instagram followers? But, but let me tell you something about that, right? Just because you hype up a particular Islander and, and you ride hard for them and you get them X amount of followers and all those things doesn't necessarily mean they're going to translate well as the influencer you want them to be. Shout out to Ek and Sue from Love Island UK as an example. Shout out to Whitney from Love Island UK as an example. There are certain people that have certain messy characteristics and traits that you find entertaining on the show because some of you identify with that messiness and resonate with that level of messiness and you might even leave the same comments on Twitter of that level of messiness. So, so you're down for the cause because they remind themselves of you. But you remember more of their messiness than you do their actual love journey for Love Island. And then what happens is, since you guys specifically hype up those messy moments, that's what your favorite Islander turns into. They turn into basically a gimmick. They turn into, oh, 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 they like when I, when I said this, when I said this particular phrase. So I am going to wear out this phrase, you know, to appease my fans. However, that's not leading to any brand deals. 
Or some people think, let me throw shade and be extra messy towards other islanders in these interviews unprovoked and think that that's going to be good for business, right? And that's going to be good for attracting, uh, you know, certain clientele. And what people fail to realize to all of you new viewers, especially all of you new international viewers, is you're not like us. You guys uh, have a whole setup to where somebody's going to immediately after the show get a PLT deal, get, you know, signed up immediately with management, and they are going to ride out the train of Love Island until they can't anymore, right? Until they don't want to influence anymore, until they want to do something else, or they end up on other reality TV shows. That is not the same fate, you guys, for these U.S. Islanders. It is very difficult for several of them to be successful regardless of the number of followers because this type of hype and everything else, it's different in USA. Why is it after six seasons, Justine and Sally from season two are still the most booked and busy Islanders out of six seasons, you guys? There is a certain personality, there's a certain level of professionalism, there's a certain level of likeness that you have to have that keeps you in the good graces of these networks, of these platforms. So you can't just assume because somebody that you hype up means that they're going to translate and get these opportunities. Justine, just now, is getting a Maybelline commercial. After all this time, after how many years ago her season aired, right? And, and, and getting the resurgence since she was recently on Love Island Games. But I say all this to say, you guys, do not get your hopes up for some of these Islanders. And I appreciate the Islanders, such as Serena, such as Kenny, who said, listen, we are going back to our day jobs. We are going back to our nine to fives. This was a great experience, but, you know, hey, this is too much. I want to go back to my nine to five. I want to, you know, get my benefits and go home and, and, and have a quiet life, right? So, so that's one side of things, right? But then you have the people who are going to try to strike while the iron is hot. But unfortunately, what some people are going to find out is really not everybody wants them like they think they do. And some people, unfortunately, are going to get a rude awakening, right? And in some instances, if they happen to be in a couple and somebody outshines them, then there's jealousy, then there's negativity, then there's ego. If they are not confident in themselves and what they bring to the table, right? So, so that's the whole other thing, right? And so then we have, you know, the commentary like i said serena defending uh you know leah saying that that's her icon and all of these things uh some serena fans were upset about this they're blaming janae fans but janae fans are, are off in the bubble uh, of kenny and janae edits from the uh princess and the frog so so they weren't even aware of what was taking place. Uh, so wasn't sure if it was Leah fans or some of these Serena fans, but they were getting, they were attacking Serena in the comments saying, why are you being this lapdog for Leah? She wouldn't do the same for you and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, what is happening? And why are we pointing fingers when you don't even know what type of fan the culprit actually was? Sometimes it is your own fans that drag you. If they don't like how you're moving, right? So that's another thing. So then the melanated folks that conducted the post-show interviews for our melanated Islanders started to ask the right questions, started to keep the focus about them, about representation, about hair care, about all of these things, not just culturally, but also intellectually trying to get to know these people for them and not wasting an interview talking about Islanders that weren't even finalists, you guys. 
it's an insult to the finalists. The finalists were just as big of a storyline and had just as dynamic as a journey as anybody else. But they unfortunately have to waste time in these interviews with melanemic people to prop up people who came in fifth and sixth place, you guys. Can you make it make sense why fifth and sixth place is getting more attention, is getting more clout and more opportunities for free, bigger podcast interviews for free, and not the winners of Love Island? Let me tell you. You know, the, you know the reason why. It's not the complexion for protection, you guys. And production had already came out and told on themselves and told that they love Rob. Except for today, uh, today, Janae exposed Rob, you guys. Because you see, you remember the episode when Janae was in the bottom and was uh, had a high chance of being dumped from the villa. Some of you don't remember the conversation. Yes, Liv was writing for Janae, but there were some sus comments in between. Even though Janae swears that she knew her girls had her back, when she watches the show back, she'll understand some of the commentary, right? But nonetheless, Janae said, because you, I don't know if you remember, but when she heard how upset the guys were that she was saved, and she was crying and she said, I know they're talking about me, but they don't have the balls to just say my name, that it's me that they wish was gone. And then you guys, later on, Rob went up to Janae's face and was like, listen, I wish it was you that was gone. And you know, Janae was trying to explain from the girl's perspective, listen, Andrea basically said like within a couple of days, hey, I I'm not gonna get to know anybody else. I'm done, right? But Janae, who has had all of these trifling dudes that played in her face, Koi looking at you, Connor looking at you, all on, on these Instagram lives trying to throw shade, but who is following Janae to see what she's up to? Who is following Kenny to see what he's up to, right? So, so, so you don't hate her that much if you want to follow her and see what's what. But nonetheless, right? This happens and, you know, it's giving, they wanted their preference. They wanted the girl with the blonde hair in the villa. But here's the thing. Here's my issue. After all of this, they were ignoring Janae in the villa. She was trying to be nice, make them smoothies. I wouldn't have made them crap, but she was making them smoothies and saying, hey, this is what a nice thing I'm doing for you, even though you don't want me here in the villa, even though you want me gone. And then it was awkward for a while because she considered these people her brothers and were, was walking past these people and they weren't talking to her. And if it wasn't for her friendship with the women, she said she would have quit the show. And she would have been out of there. And, and she said she didn't understand Aaron's comment about Friendship Island because you have more energy and emotions at the thought of Rob getting dumped from the villa. And even during the heart rate challenge elimination, when Rob was at the bottom, you were out there crying your eyes out, talking about if Rob leaves, you're going to leave too. As if you can't function without him when Kaylor is right there, the woman that you're supposedly in love with, the woman you supposedly did a girlfriend proposal to, and all of the theatrics was not enough to get you to the finals because the public saw through the BS. And so now, you know, where we are is where does this leave everything as we head into the reunion, you guys? Because here's the thing. We're seeing a whole different Kenny as well in these interviews. This Kenny that we're seeing now, he's got personality. He's got funny facial expressions. He's got all the tea, however... Sometimes Janae just talks, so therefore he doesn't have to spill the real tea and expose these people. But nonetheless, we got more insight. We got more insight that they actually had a good five, six days together before Casa Amor. We got some insight that Kenny was down bad post Casa Amor. He was already in tears when he saw Janae by herself. And then he was crying in the shower, apparently, and crying in bed over Janae. 
because she was upset uh, that he had brought back somebody else. And, and apparently she was saying, you know, maybe your mom didn't raise you as good as I thought she did because you because this was an idiot move is what she was telling Ariana. Thank goodness that didn't air. Oh, my goodness. But the one thing that I've loved thus far out of all of these postseason interviews is I love the energy from Janae and Kenny, you guys. And they've got a whole fan base, you guys. A whole Janae, uh, Kene fan base uh, that, that is brutal out here in these streets. But they are riding hard for them. And they're telling the new bandwagoners, they're saying, hey, where were you when we were in the trenches and you guys were calling this couple a scammer? You guys were calling people fake. You were questioning whether or not Kenny was into Janae. You kept saying that Janae was more into Kenny than Kenny was into her. And it is a totally different dynamic in these interviews. They are beating all of the allegations. They're even sucking some of you in that were their biggest haters. But all it was was a smear campaign. All it was was to de-campaign to get your top two finalists, right? But here's my thing. I don't like that level of toxicity because that's the same toxicity that has overtaken the UK and leads to people getting threats and all types of things in their comments and in their DMs, like what Daya is currently receiving ever since she got out the villa still receiving those type of inappropriate messages to this day. I miss the days where we can have a key and go back and forth with, with whoever our Islanders were that we liked and whatever storylines we were sick of or whatever and just have a fun time and what was time to vote, we stood on business and voted who we wanted to. But not bullying people into you know voting on who you want to to, to push a certain narrative, even if that person didn't really have a Love Island journey and simply had a messy journey. So nonetheless, it's like sometimes people can't take off their stand glasses and look at things from an objective perspective, right? Like, like who's being promoted right now as a couple who's not, right? Who, who is doing certain opportunities and who isn't? Pay attention to that stuff. There is methods to the madness, you guys. But nonetheless, overall, I'm here for the messiness. I just hope they do not regurgitate the same tomfoolery they did during the season, which was the tired and old and delayed storylines of Rob and Aaron and Kaylor and Aaron. We want to hear from the rest of the Islanders, in particular, the finalists that you cut out of the show in favor for Rob, Kaylor, and Aaron until you couldn't forge them in anymore and they were gone, right? But I'm hoping at that August 19th reunion, like I said in a previous video, that a lot of these Islanders watch these episodes back so they can see what some of their so-called friends was saying behind their backs. And you can clean it up now in the interviews and say, hey, we fought, we, we hashed it all out. But you sometimes don't know how mean some of these so-called friends are and how nasty some people, not, not the nasty Ken, Kendall's talking about, but how nasty some of these comments and disrespect can be that is very hurtful and, and completely and utterly unnecessary, right? Like you don't have to put people down to, to build up others. You don't have to do all of these things to, you know, be seen or, or to get picked or to get chosen. But some people felt that they had to resort to those tactics and it was very lame. But it's rearing its head now because it's displaying the insecurity. It's displaying that you're not built for this, that you can't handle this, that you are insecure to the point you're willing to just tear people down, uh, you know, at the drop of the hat to feel good about yourself. But ultimately, once the hype dies down of Love Island USA, we will see who really is still writing for who. We will see out of everybody who really is getting the opportunities and not the people who are just being forced to our faces right now. 
but the people who are actually going to have the longevity, the people who actually are going to be the professionals and secure these deals and potentially even maybe secure something with Peacock. But nonetheless, some of the behavior, the threats, the negativity, stop it. The show is over. That there is no reason to be throwing shade at people. It's one thing if you're reacting to something somebody said in an interview about an Islander. It's another to just be hating just to hate because you're seeing the popularity of other Islanders compared to others and you want to try to shut it down by spreading insults. No, 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 no. There's a thing called a mute button. There's a thing called a block button. If you do not want to see content on certain Islanders, don't follow those people. Don't go to the hashtag or mute those people so you don't see it. But the insults, the dragging, the pointing fingers, the blame game, it's giving middle school. And you guys got to do better. You guys got to grow up because that's not it. Be adults, support your faves, watch these interviews, hold out for the, you know, upcoming reunion and all of the things, but get it together. Because you're embarrassing yourselves. This is why I miss when nobody was watching Love Island USA, when it was on lowly CBS, not CBS, CBS, the first two seasons, you guys, I mean, first three seasons, sorry, uh, three, season three is still traumatic for some people, uh, even Peacock, apparently, it seems, because they do not want anything to do with that cast. They will cast from season two before they will cast from season three. They will cast from season four, five, and six before they cast from season three. And I know they've got to be feeling a certain type of way. Bergie has already admitted from last season, season five, Soul Ties are crazy that even his cast didn't get this level of attention. But the reason they didn't, Bergie, was because we saw through a lot of the fakery that was taking place. And we saw a lot of the toxicity that was taking place, and we said, no, 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 no. Literally, the second place couple that we knew was not going to last slept with somebody else at Casa Amor, which is like the ultimate level of disrespect. But the problem was last season, production had their faves that were not the same faves as the fans and orchestrated mysterious dumpings to ensure that the people they wanted in the final got there versus the people that the fans actually were rooting for, right? But this is probably one of the few seasons where our votes actually matter to the point the right people were getting dumped from the villa, for the most part, with the exception of a couple of eliminations. And we can argue on what place you feel each couple should have finished from this season. But nonetheless, you guys... Uh, you know, there's a lot of activity that's taking place right now. There's a lot going on. The cast is still, you know, gaining all types of followers, all types of clout, all types of interviews. So we're going to continue to see how this plays out. And we're going to continue to see who really still remains friends by this reunion or shortly after. Who still remains in the group chat by this reunion or shortly after. We will see. So there is that. Please let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments. Please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you're notified the moment I post new content on my channel. And with that being said, I'll talk to you guys again very soon.